Hey, it's Darius, and I'm on the CPA exam Facebook groups every day. And I love reading about when you pass and thank me for I-75. But what do you think is the most common question I answer every day? Which discipline should I take? And here's the answer. If you already passed reg and you enjoy entity tax, especially tax planning for entities, choose TCP. If not, but you already passed FAR and you like random calculations and formulas, then choose BAR, Business Analysis and Reporting. Otherwise, choose ISC, Information Systems and Controls. No calculations at all. Either way, I-75 will have you prepared for all parts of the CPA exam. Just go to i75cpareview.com. We always have a special, so go to i75cpareview.com. Get yourself on the right road with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. All right, what's up with the learning curve analysis? So learning curve is based on a premise that as workers become more familiar with a specific task, the per unit labor hours will decline as experience is gained as production becomes more efficient. Learning curve is used to set standards and project costs as variable costs per unit should decline until a steady state period is achieved. Once a steady state occurs, labor hours per unit will remain constant, but in the early stages of production, that's when the learning curve really kicks in and achieves savings, efficiency. See, if products have long production runs, making a learning curve analysis is useful because in the long run, the company will produce more and production will cost less because of the experience gained in the earlier months and years. So the longer the production run, the more beneficial the learning curve analysis. So let's look at the basics. Learning curve is based on doubling production. The learning curve is usually expressed as a percentage of reduced time each time cumulative production doubles. So in this example, each batch produces 100 units. So when does production double? Because we said the learning curve really kicks in when production doubles. So the first batch produces 100 units. The second batch produces another 100 units. The cumulative units produced after the second batch are 200 units. And what does that tell us? That's the first doubling from 100 to 200 units. The third batch produces another 100. The fourth batch produces another 100. But now we're up to 400 cumulative units. Look what happened. That's our second doubling. From 200, we've doubled to 400 units. And that happens when? Batch four. So by looking at the units produced as well as the batch numbers, we can see that production doubles for the first time at batch two, for the second time at batch four, and then when does production double again after batch four? Not batch five, another 100 units are produced, we're only up to 500 cumulative. Then after batch six, we're up to 600 cumulative units. We haven't doubled yet. After batch seven, we're at 700 units. We still haven't doubled since the last time, which was after batch four. But then with batch eight, now we have 800 cumulative units, and that's the third time that production has doubled. So let's take that information and apply an 80% learning curve. The learning curve is usually expressed as a percentage of reduced time each time cumulative production doubles. Now the exam will have to give you the percentage. We're going to go with an 80% learning curve here. The other thing the exam will have to tell you is how many direct labor hours were needed to make the very first batch. And it tells us it took 50 direct labor hours to make the first batch. The first batch was 100 units. Each batch is 100 units and the first batch of 100 took 50 direct labor hours. When do we get to apply the 80% learning curve? the first time production doubles. The first doubling comes with batch two when we now have 200 units. Each batch is 100 units, so after batch two, we've doubled production from 100 to 200 units. What do we do with the 80%? If we multiply 80% times the 50 hours that it took to make the first batch, we get 40 hours. What does that 40 hours tell us? That's the cumulative average time after 200 units. The cumulative average time to make those 200 units is 40 hours based on an 80% learning curve. Does that mean it took 40 hours to make the second batch? No. 
but we said that that's the cumulative average time after 200 units, assuming an 80% learning curve on the 50 direct labor hours that it took to make the first batch. Okay, batch three, we make another 100 units, we're up to 300, but we don't apply the 80% because we haven't doubled. The last time we doubled was here when we went from 100 to 200. Now batch four, we're up to 400 units. That's our second doubling from 200 to 400. So the cumulative average time after 400 units is now down to 32 hours. Why? We go with the old cumulative average time of 40 hours and we multiply by the 80% learning curve. So now we could say that after 400 units are produced, the cumulative average time is down to 32 hours. Did it take 32 hours to produce anything in particular? No, this is just an assumption. Okay, then we have batch five where we produce another 100 units, we're up to 500. Batch six, we're up to 600. Batch seven, there's no doubling until batch eight. The third doubling from 400 to 800 units happens in batch eight. The cumulative average time, the exam will ask you after 800 units, is now down to 25.6. We take the old cumulative average time of 32 and we multiply by the 80% learning curve. And that tells us that the cumulative average time after 800 units is 25.6 hours. Assuming what? An 80% learning curve. All right, here's the kind of question they could ask. It is estimated that a particular manufacturing job is subject to an 80% learning curve. The first unit required 70 labor hours to complete. What is the cumulative average time per unit after completing two units? And the answer would be C, 56. The learning curve is expressed as a percentage of reduced time to complete a task for each doubling of cumulative production. Assuming an 80% learning curve, if the first unit required 70 hours to complete, the average completion time after two units, the first doubling will be 80% of 70 or 56, letter C. And this tells us that assuming an 80% learning curve, cumulative average time after two units is 56 hours. All right, same facts. It is estimated that a particular manufacturing job is subject to an 80% learning curve. The first unit required 70 labor hours to complete. What is the cumulative average time per unit after completing four units? So we know the learning curve is expressed as a percentage of reduced time to complete a task for each doubling of cumulative production. So if the first unit required 70 hours to complete, the average completion time after two units was 56 hours, we said in the previous question. If production is again doubled now to four total units, the cumulative average completion time will be 44.8 hours, and that'll be 80% of the 56 previous cumulative average time. So 44.8 as our cumulative average time per unit, that becomes the average of all the units produced up to this point, assuming an 80% learning curve. Letter B is correct. Now this doesn't mean that it's taking 44.8 hours to produce units. This is just an assumption based on the 80% learning curve that every time production doubles, we should see efficiency. 80% learning curve means 20% efficiency. We should keep improving by 20% compared to the last time production doubled. All right, same facts. It is estimated that a particular manufacturing job is subject to an 80% learning curve. The first unit required 70 labor hours to complete. What's the average time per unit after completing eight units? And if you think you know, leave me the answer in the comments section. And remember to like and subscribe because it helps the channel out a lot. And if you need more help with the bar or any part of the CPA exam, go to i75cpareview.com. Get yourself on the right road with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference.